to see downtown Las Vegas today with its arts district, entertainment district, academic medicine, shopping, pubs, and of course, this beautiful oasis in the center of it all, Symphony Park. It may be hard to believe the core of Las Vegas was little more than blight and streets that emptied at dark. That's what Oscar Goodman saw when he took a walk around the area in 1999, right after being elected mayor of the city. There were uh, doors of businesses that were closed down. There were broken windows. There were no people after five. And I said, what's happening here? This looks like the downtown of areas that I went to to try cases. Uh, Newark, mm -hmm. uh, San Diego. I mean, the gas lamp district didn't happen overnight. It happened because somebody made it happen. Newark, somebody made it happen. It was in that revealing stroll, this new mayor vowed that someone who'd make it happen in Las Vegas would be him. I said, that is what I have to do. I have to make downtown Las Vegas my goal to make sure that it's vibrant because I likened it to uh, an apple. And when the core of the apple is uh, rotting, uh, then the bushel begins to rot and then the, the whole uh, barrel uh, rots. He did some research and was told by people in the redevelopment world he needed land to kickstart his mission, something scarce downtown. But he would not be defeated. And then the light bulb went on. I said to myself, you know, every day driving from my home downtown to my law office, I passed this piece of empty land. And that's what we call the brownfield because nothing was happening on it. It was a railroad site. Uh, it was poisonous uh, for all intents and purposes, and it would have to be remediated. But here there were 61 acres. Nothing was happening to it. Nothing was happening around it. He tracked down the owners who wanted $33 million for the land. Well, that wasn't going to happen, so the mayor got creative. We have a very valuable piece of land in our technology park, which is in a more affluent part of town at the time, up at Lake Mead in Tadea. And we could trade land that we have there for the 61 acres. And we worked out a deal where we paid them $3 million and traded the land and we now owned the Brownfield site. So now that he had the land, it was time to convince developers to build on it. And here is the result of his first believer, Larry Ruvo. He was building a medical memorial for his father, Lou Ruvo, a place where neurological diseases would be treated and studied, and where caregivers were treated as compassionately as the patients. But Rubo was going to build it outside of downtown. That is, until the mayor had a chat with him. He said, what, what can I do for you? I said, if you would move that from the outskirts into what we were then calling a Union Park, um, it would be the biggest favor you could ever do for me. And we worked out a deal where he moved it down. We gave him five acres. And now we have a Frank Gehry designed building. You can't pass there without somebody with a camera. Now the ball was rolling. And then Don Snyder and Myron Martin, they came up to my office and they said, you know, we've been banging our head against the wall for years and nobody wanted to listen to us. We need a performing arts center. I said, I have a piece of land for you. The Smith family, uh, they donated a substantial amount of money. The city assisted with the land. And now we have the Smith Center of Performing Arts. Gets no better than that. Union Park was eventually and appropriately named Symphony Park. And the momentum continued to build as Oscar Goodman was termed out in 2011. He says, thankfully, the next mayor held the same vision for the city. His wife, our mayor, Carolyn Goodman. People began to believe that the city was serious and they began to develop the downtown area. And they fixed up their places or they built new places. And then Carolyn comes along and she does the same thing basically with Main Street. Main Street and so much more either came back to life or came to be under the watchful eyes of Mayor Carolyn Goodman. We even had the first new ground up casino resort built downtown since 1980, circa not to mention professional sports. The only thing I couldn't get on are sports, but fortunately uh, during her term, uh, with the sports capital of the world as well as the entertainment of the world now. 
We spoke with the director of economic and urban development. He says the Goodmans share a vision and a passion for Las Vegas, and we are all the beneficiaries. Both mayors, Goodman, uh, really wanted downtown to be the cultural core of Las Vegas, and I think we've seen that. And, and Symphony Park was huge in really creating that environment uh, with, the, with the Smith Center. Now you see what's happening in the arts district with all the theaters and the art and the craft breweries and the craft food. It's, it really has established um, downtown as really that, that epicenter. Smith says an emphasis now is on residential because more people want to be part of the downtown energy. In Symphony Park alone, there is the newly opened Arc and Park Haven, with another high-rise residential building on the way. Anywhere between three and 5,000 residents will soon be calling Symphony Park home. And there's more. Uh, we have a brand new Marriott um, Element Hotel that's supposed to break ground in June of this year. Uh, VIX is uh, um, a brand new restaurant in Symphony Park is starting to get built out. Uh, I anticipate we'll see a lot more retail, a lot more restaurants within the apartment complexes. And then our goal is also to get a for sale condo uh, development within Symphony Park as well. There's a lot going on in and around what used to be a brown field. I went from a bum to a genius. <laughs> uh, I went from a, uh, a, a dummy to a visionary. And it's the same old Oscar, nothing changed. But you won't find either Mayor Goodman gloating. They do what they do for the love of the city. I had to convince people to uh, bring in these other resources that we had to make uh, good deals with the people because it's for the community's benefit. We weren't putting any money in our pocket, but the community would benefit.